wanted to sit down in this video and talk about sustainability because I truly believe in living a sustainable lifestyle. I feel like I grew up already living a lifestyle like that. Not in every aspect, but in a lot of aspects. My parents were really good about buying secondhand and recycling. Like I said, it wasn't in all aspects, um, but I feel like our family maybe did it more than other families, if that makes sense. I just, I, it was more of a regular thing to reuse and recycle than it seemed in other families and not in like the sense of like taking plastics to recycle like our community didn't have a recycle bin or anything like that but it was like thrifting buying things for our house second hand um most of our like furniture came second hand my mom replaced our like front and back doors with second pre-owned doors and so we upcycled a lot and it was just very normal in our family to do that as i've like started my own family and have my own home it's something that i've expounded on. I don't know if that's the right word. I would say I do it more than my own family did and I think it is becoming more of a normal thing. I just want to share the steps that I've taken to live a more sustainable lifestyle. I can't say that everything I own is recyclable or secondhand. Um, I obviously still buy things that are new and I'm sure things that are like unethical. I do my best to buy and recycle and reuse um, in a sustainable way. This video is just to kind of share some tips, some steps that I take in my life to do that. I wanted to start with sharing in the wardrobe, clothing, fashion department. Um, how I reuse and recycle. I've always been a thrifter of all things, but from the start it was definitely clothing. I have no problem thrifting shoes. I have no problem thrifting clothes. Um, and as a kid, it felt like... Like when people would ask me like, oh my gosh, where did you get that? And it was from the thrift store. Like I felt embarrassed to tell people um, because back then it was just not necessarily frowned upon, but it just was not like always met in a positive way. Um, now when you say you've thrifted stuff, people are like, wow, that's so cool. Like it's so awesome that you can find such cool stuff at the thrift store but like I've been doing it my whole life and so I know what I look for I obviously thrift a lot of my clothing and then I also make a lot of my clothing which when you sew or knit or crochet your own clothing it can be sustainable but not always <laughs> um, and I think people get that a little bit confused sometimes because um, obviously we want to avoid fast fashion and so it seems like sewing or knitting or crocheting your own wardrobe is supporting sustainability because it's obviously the opposite of fast fashion it's very slow fashion because you make it on your own time but it's not always sustainable Buying the materials new is not always sustainable and also depending on the materials you purchase it's also bad. But those are like the two ways that I source um, my more sustainable wardrobe. I would probably say 70% of my wardrobe is thrifted and 
25% of it is like homemade and then like 5% of it is probably bought brand new. And it's not something I've been able to do just like overnight. I've been thrifting clothes for years and all of the items that I have now in my wardrobe, like I've had them for years and I thrifted them thrifted them over the last like probably three or four years I would say. Anyways, I'm very proud that I've been able to thrift my wardrobe and I feel like my wardrobe is very unique because of that also. But um, there's so much more that goes behind a sustainable wardrobe besides just the way you source it, like thrifting or sewing it. A lot of sustainability goes into the maintenance of the clothes that you already have and also um, just preventing them from like going into landfills and that sort of thing. And so part of this video is also me showing you how I preserve my wardrobe, um, reuse things, and just so that my clothes last longer. So I have a few different piles of clothes that I will be using as an example for this video. Um, so we'll just start with the first. And this one's pretty small. This pile of clothes is pieces that need fixing, but I like the base of them. So this is a dress that I thrifted um, and I really like it, but it has a slit on one side. I don't see myself wearing it like that, so I will um, instead of just donating it again, I will um, close the slit just using my sewing machine and make this piece more wearable. Um, and also, so I thrifted this piece and it's a style that I really like and I already know I wear a lot, um, which is part of my thrifting process. I just, I thrift a lot of things that I already wear often um, so that I know that it's not just going to end up going back to the thrift store again. So it's plaid which or checkered which I've been wearing very often. I have a red checkered dress that I wear at least once a week probably. Um, and it's also lay you're able to layer it really easily. Um, which I do with my dresses pretty often um, and so I could wear it as a dress or I could wear it as a skirt. Um, it needs fixing but once it's fixed I'm sure I'll wear it tons and tons. In the last two years I've really prioritized thrifting really good materials um, that are long lasting and so I avoid synthetic materials. I go for like cotton and linen and wool and cashmere and those sort of things that um, are natural fibers so they're obviously better for you, they're better for the environment, but they're also long lasting. Synthetic materials just don't have the lifespan as natural uh, fibers and materials do and so I've really prioritized that. So I will be reusing the material instead because I don't like the knit style. So I've already taken a sleeve off and unraveled it um, so that I can knit it into a new sweater because color is really nice. It's a color I wear all of the time and the material is also um, really good. So that's the plan for the sweater so it's being reused um, and recycled into a new sweater that I'll wear all the time um, and will stick in my wardrobe for a while. And the last thing in this pile is a pair of jeans that are in good shape. I like men's jeans. I think they, the, the fit is really nice. I like the material of most men's jeans better because it's thicker um, and it's not like stretchy. It's not going to get worn through. So this is like 100%
cotton denim. Um, but it's a little bit big on me, so I need to alter it a little bit so it'll fit me better. Um, and then also, these are actually my husband's. He was wearing these, and the belt straps are torn, so I need to fix that also. But other than that, they're a perfectly good pair of jeans. I like the fit of the legs. I like the material. Um, and so after some altering, they'll be something that I can wear and use for years to come. This pile is just a pile of knits that um, just need some tender loving care. This sweater is one that I didn't thrift. Um, I bought it new probably three or four years ago and it's also not a great material either. It's acrylic and so it's fully synthetic, um, but I've gotten a lot of wear out of it. I actually was about to take it to the thrift store um, just over a year ago, and then I purchased a D... I purchased this, which is like a sweater shaver. Um, it deep hills sweaters um and i think i got it for like less than ten dollars off of amazon and it's already saved like so many sweaters for me and it just helps to maintain my sweaters um upkeep them and i don't know it's just helped me keep sweaters so like this one when I was about to um, give it to the thrift store, it was covered in pilling, uh, even much, much worse than it currently is, and it just looked dirty because of it. It had like hair stuck in it, and it just looked bad. And I, I love the shape of this sweater, and so I didn't really want to. Um, and I actually got this shaver for this sweater because at the time it was also very pilly, but this sweater is 100% cashmere and I was like, oh, like I love the color, the, I love the material too, and it was also like brand new when I got it, it just, from wearing it so often, it got a lot of pilling. And so I bought it for this red sweater. Deep Hilda, it looked amazing. And I was like, you know, like this little device worked so well. I should try it on some of my other sweaters that I want to get rid of. And so I tried it on this one and it made it look like a brand new sweater. It looked so much better and I decided to keep it um, because of that. And so although this material is not great um i'm still not ready to get rid of it um and so i'm going to reuse and recycle it until it's just really no good and so the pot this pile of sweaters are just sweaters that need some tender loving care so that i pull them out of my wardrobe more often. They're all starting to get a little pilly and um, sweaters are also something that I don't wash very often. Sweaters don't need to be washed very often but it's about time that I wash them again and so I'm going to depill them, wash them so they're fresh and new and will get cycled through my wardrobe often again. And then this pile is all things that need to be washed, but washed in a very specific way. Um, so there are also items that I don't <clears throat> wash super often, or I wear them multiple times before washing them. Um, so I have some wool items, sweaters, and then tons of linen pants. So linen is definitely something that I also um, have 
a lot of in my wardrobe. One, because I think it's really flattering and it's comfortable, but it also lasts a really long time and it just gets better and better with wear. Um, and so these are all items that need to be washed in a specific way. So uh, socks are obvious. I actually just made these socks for an Etsy pattern recently. But I've worn them to the point where they're like a little misshapen, they're a little dirty, and so they also need some TLC um, and to be washed. And wool is something that you can't just throw in the washer and dryer, you have to hand wash it. And so those are in the pile. These are some other wool socks that need to be hand washed. <coughs> I just made these mittens for a recent Etsy pattern and they're perfect and great but I have not blocked them yet. And then these two sweaters are both thrifted, they're both wool or wool blends and I really love the colors and the materials um, but they're like a little bit snug in some places. I like them to fit a little bit looser so like the arms on this one are a little too snug um, and also same with this one. So they're not the best for layering, uh, which if they were, that would be optimal. And so I'm actually going to re-block these ones, um, which is hand washing them and then blocking them to fit a certain way, just kind of stretching out the arms while they're wet so that they dry wider than they currently are um, so that they'll be better for layering and you obviously can't like read block an item to be like way way bigger than it was before or way way smaller but you can adjust things just a little bit um, and so that's the goal with both of these sweaters and then um, these four pairs of pants are all linen and actually these three are all from Costco and Costco clothing is fast fashion. It is not um, the most sustainable. I decided that it was worth the purchase for me because it was a classic shape. They're super comfy because they have an elastic waistband. Um, and the material is really, really good. And so they're all three the same pairs of pants. And actually this blue pair I thrifted. The other two I purchased at the same time. Um, and the these two I wore all through the summer. I'm sure I'll wear them all of this spring and summer too. Um, the only thing is they're meant to be hung to dry, at least in my opinion. They just dry much better and my mom taught me this because she also has all of these pants at home um, or at least two or two of them. I think she has three though. Um, anyways, they can be washed in the washer but then if you hang them to dry the shape is just much better. They dry longer where if you put them in the dryer they kind of shrink to a little bit shorter so I like to hang them to dry um, just because it lengthens them it makes it softer too um, and so all of these just need to be rewashed and hung to dry because the last time they were thrown in the dryer by accident and so they just uh, don't look good <laughs> they're way too short for these two they, for the most part, I have hung them to dry for the entirety of the time that I've owned them. But this pair, um, whoever owned them previously, you can tell that they just threw them in the dryer every time because they're the exact same size, but these ones are much shorter. They're also much, like, smaller. And so, essentially, I'm going to be blocking these also, uh, even though... The term blocking really only applies to knits, but these just need to be um, washed again just so that they're a little bit more comfortable and fit better.
This pair is thrifted also, it's linen, and um, I just haven't washed it yet since getting it from the thrift store. It also might need some altering, but I want to wash it and hang it to dry like I do with my other linen pieces, just to see what it looks like after that before like shortening it, because right now it is a little too long. So I want to wash it and um, hang it to dry like I normally would and then alter it to fit me perfectly. So yeah, those are all of the steps that I'm going to be taking to maintaining my wardrobe. Um, and then there's other things that I would love to talk about sustainability wise 